everybody, welcome back to the Cheapo Zone. Yeah, we have got a brand new one from Manning. This little meter is the little meter that does something that a lot of multimeters, expensive or cheap, just don't do. What is that? Well, stay tuned 20 seconds and you'll find out. <laughs> Hey, the A01 from Anning, brand new. I mean, thing's been out for maybe a month at most. Uh, looking a little Anning style meter, has that definite Anning look to it. And yes, it does something called inductance. You don't find that too often on most multimeters. Hey, there's only three basic components in any electronic circuit. Resistors, capacitors, and you got it, inductors. And in the latter, the little Anning has you covered. Okay, so what do you get in the box? Well, hey, look at this. You get your thermal couple because it does temperature in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. Oh, I love a meter that does temperature. You also get your standard El Cheapo test probes. Uh, you know, nothing to get too excited about. We'll take a closer look in a minute. And with Anning, you get a nice little carry case. Now, sometimes people say they have a smell. I don't know, never smelled anything other than just a case, but no worries, no smells going on here. Now, shiver me timbers. Anning, you never gave me a user manual. No manual, what the? Yeah, anyway, all is good. Thanks to our friend called Google. We got all the goods and low down on this here meter. It's a meter of sixes, 60 millifarad, uh, 60 micro henrys, uh, milli henrys rather, and 60 mega ohms as well. So yes, if sixes are your thing, Welcome to the world of the AL01. Has that classic Anning look, doesn't it? Oh yes, it does. Hard case, nothing soft going on here. So you, oh, you don't want to drop this because chances are it may or may not survive the fall. Ooh, scary. Compared to its bigger brother, the 9002, yes, it is small. But you know, good things do come in small packages. That's what my grandmother used to say. One thing I really appreciate the fact is that the rotary selector switch has a nice deep groove. So not only do you hit those ranges with authority, but you don't have any problem in terms of getting a hold of that selector. Now it's easy to grab with or with a go gloves. Excellente. L01 does ship with a tilt stand, but is a pretty pathetic tilt stand at that. Oh, it is so flaky. Oh my God. But you know what? It's manageable. Barely. Ah. And he also gave us a pretty decent looking LCD display. Liquid crystal digital, uh, nothing, you know, too fancy out of this world, but it is 6,000 counts, true RMS. And I mean, it does look pretty good. We have a little bit of bleeding over here on the right, as you can see, but all things said, hey, not a bad deal. And speaking of deals, this thing was like 20 bucks Canadian, around $15 US. So that my friends is a deal. Before we do anything else, let's get this screen protector off. Thanks, for Anning, for providing us with that on. That is definitely a little bit better. Let's turn that backlight back on. And we still have that bleeding, but definitely easy on the eyes. Now, if we compare the displays with the backlight on, I gotta say they are really, oh, close. In fact, I'd say they're almost identical. Let's just lose some light here. And yeah, we both have the bleeding in the same spot. Um, but that being said, you know, hey, they both look pretty good. DC accuracy, 5.000 is what we want and 4.993 is what we get. Seven counts out, but definitely in spec. Continuity is next. Stock default test leads. And they are on the cheesy side. Here we go. Three, two, one. Wow. Yeah. Not so good, is it? It's latched, but oh, it just, just doesn't work with this crappy default leads. Let's try the Probe Masters. Probe Masters. Hey, by the way, if you don't have a pair of Probe Masters, get one. It's good to have at least one on the bench because these are some of the best leads you will ever own. Okay. Here we go. And wow, what a difference a test lead makes. Loud latched and beautiful. 
Boy, when I say loud, I wasn't kidding. 86.1 dBAs. Maximum output volume in continuity. That is loud. Now there's no denying that the Anning is a good looking little meter. I mean, look at these fugly guys. Oh, this one is so popular, but I think it's just rather ugly. And uh, well, mm, need I say anything about this one? No, it's a good looking meter, but sometimes it's just not about the looks. If you know what I mean. Another cool feature with the Anning is the fact it has an onboard temperature sensor. Put it into temperature mode. And look at that, 19 degrees Celsius. We don't even need a thermal couple. Uh, hit that select switch again. It brings us into Fahrenheit, 67 degrees Fahrenheit in the lab. Absolutely excellent day. And hey, it doesn't negate the fact they do give you a temperature sensor. So if you do want to temp, uh, test rather temperatures in liquids, uh, whatever, you can. Next up, we're gonna be looking at inductance. Now, one thing I don't recommend is using the default test leads the meter ships with, at least not with this Anning. I mean, you don't wanna use leads like this. No, you, you just don't. You're gonna have erroneous readings. You're gonna put all sorts of, you know, bad things into your equation. Don't do it. What I'm gonna do is use these Kaiweeds tweezers, nice little SMD add-ons you can get from uh, Kaiweeds. Gonna use that for each of the LCR meters. <sighs> It'll make it a little bit easier and just a little bit more straight across the board. Okay, for the purpose of this inductance test, we're just gonna use some basic inductors. Yeah, one millihenry, 2.2, 3.3, and 4.7 millihenry, respectively. That's it, that's all. Just your standard sort of inductors. You can get them anywhere, Amazon, uh, your local electronics store, what have you. We're gonna be comparing the AL01 against these three LCR meters. Uh, another L cheapo, the 4070, the XTEC, 380193 and of course the unity ut622a so basically uh, cheap uh, and not so cheap and, and definitely not cheap so yeah let's start off with that one millihenry coming in at just under so 0.914 millihenry it is 2.2 millihenry coming in at 1.91 3.3 millihenry is next Oh my goodness. What's going on here? Seven point six two. Seven point six one millihenry. What the uh, That is not good. Fine, let's try the four point seven millihenry. Wow. It's all over the place. Let's Try this again. 9.43 makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> 9.43 millihenry for a 4.7. Okay, well, that's unusual. I'm gonna use the same test leads and we're gonna try it now with the SZBJ meter. It's a cheapy, but a goodie. One millihenry coming at 0.98, 2.2 coming in at 2.8. Zero. Here's the one that gave the Anning so much trouble. 3.3 millihenry. Look at that. Not a problem. 2.96. millihenry at 4.30. Wow. Much, much better than the Anning. Good Same gracious. Same thing. One millihenry for the Unity coming in at 9.68 microhenries. Now to the 2.2. Coming at 1.98 with the one that gave the ending so much trouble, 3.3 millihenry. Coming in at 2.91 millihenry. 4.7 millihenry. 4.22. Good job, Unity. Okay, finally, we've got the X Tech here. By the way, if you're wondering, uh, one kilohertz is the frequency I am using by default for the Unity. Okay, we're starting off with the one millihenry coming in at 965 so micro. Two millihenry. Coming in as 2.04. 3.3 coming in at 3.01. And finally, 4.7. 
Remember, this gave that anning so much problems. Coming at 4.42. Got a little wire round core inductor here. Coming in at 40 microhenry, according to the Unity. And when you know it, the Anning AL01 agrees. Oh. Well, there you have it in an inductance nutshell. <laughs> Try saying that three times fast. Uh, yeah, we know who the loser is. And unfortunately, it is our little Anning AL01. Uh, just not reliable, just not good enough. In, in some cases, it worked fine. Others, well, you saw. Ugh. And by the way, if you're interested, the best showing was X-Tech. And hey, the Unity wasn't far behind. The little AL01 boasts a capacitance of 60 millifarad. Well, let's just see if it can do a little better. Here's 100 millifarad, 100,000 microfarad. Okay, here we go, three to one. Can it do better than spec? And I take that as a no. Well, you know, hey, it's try worth trying, right? Okay, here we have a 48 millifarad. Sometimes those Annings just do better than what they're saying, but uh, in this case, that's not the case. Forty-eight millifarad, coming in at forty-two point seven, which is right for this cap. So, and that didn't take long at all, did it? Good stuff. Okay, doke. Diode time. It is LED. Lady meeting diode. Starting off with the red LED, and we are not in diode mode. Oh my goodness! There we go. Here we go. <laughs> red LED, and lit with a forward voltage drop over to the green. Looking good. Yellow, same thing. Three for three. Here we are with the white. Yes. Can we make it five for five? The blue. It is lit and a forward voltage drop. Good job, Anning. Five for five. Gotta love it. Okay. Standard dial. Well, of course, that's no problem. No problem at all. Don't have that nice audible diode beep, but hey, it did five for five, and that is a good thing. Output voltage in dial mode is a balmy 3.93 volts, just under four volts. Beauty. Let's take a quick peek at resistance. Sitting at one mega ohm, two mega ohm, three. Oh, it's fast. Four, five. Wow. Blaring. That is one fast resistance mode. And resistance accuracy, 100.5 ohm. Close enough. Well, not really, but it's close. And can we hit the proverbial 0.5 of an ohm resistor? And coming in a wee bit low, actually, at 0.2 of an ohm. Ah. Now we're in AC mode, 120 volts AC. And it is true RMS, of course. Nice thing about this as well is we can hit the select switch. There is our 60 Hertz frequency and our duty cycle 49.8. Sitting right now at two amps and spot on 2.00 amps DC. Now let's not forget that this shares that high current input along, along with the low current uh, milliamps as well. So eh, not always the greatest, but that's what it is. Let's bring it down a little bit. One amp even and 1.00, oh yes, spot on. So the anning is coming up to snuff in terms of that current. Let's bring it down. And this HP power supply is very well calibrated. 200 milliamps. Oh, so close. 204. Finally, let's check out the non-contact voltage now on this Anning. No indicator on it uh, where that sensor is. You know, sometimes they say it's over here or over there or whatever, but uh, on the Anning at least, uh, no indicator. Okay, here we go. And look at that. We have absolutely nada, nothing. Nothing coming out of the Anning. Oh. We are in the back end of the high-powered mains. And we get a little something at least. 
but it is very, very weak. Would I rely on this? Uh, definitely not. Teared out time, here we go. Starting off with the reverse side. Uh, kind of cheap plastic, hey, what is to be expected? No shielding, of course. Uh, yeah, so a little bit of blast protection over here, but some pretty crappy molding. I mean, yeah, it's just kind of, yeah. Anyway, let's do something a little bit different starting from top to bottom. Over here with the main IC, the SD78P953 from SDIC Micro. Yeah, look at that. That is a uh, SOC product, has two 24-bit analog to digital converters. Powerful little chip, I gotta say. High precision ADC capable of measuring 6,000 divisions or more, so, mmm. Has some other pretty cool specs too, such as the AC True RMS output. Error supposedly doesn't exceed 0.5% at one kilohertz, so it is fairly uh, accurate. Um, multifunctional galore, 20 KB of OTP programming memory, 512 bytes of SRAM data. I mean, the list goes on. Of course, it's energy efficient, low voltage. Cool thing about this chip is it can also use either an external or internal oscillator. In this case, they've decided to go ahead with an external oscillator right over there, and of course, there is our buzzer. Hey, that battery housing attached permanently to the PCB looks a little weird, doesn't it? Over here we have a diode clamp and man, oh man, don't even get me started on these fuses. Good God. Why on earth does Anning choose to use fuses like this? Honestly, I just don't know. If you ever tried to find these things, it can be problematic as heck. I don't know, I don't know what they're thinking. Anyway, here we go. Uh, these are very weird size-wise. 3.6 by 10.3 millimeter ceramic fuses. This is the 10 amp, 250 volt. So yeah, I mean, it, it's true to its name, but I don't know why they're just not using a common size fuse. Anyway, over here we've got our low current fuse. That's a 600 milliamp, 250 volt as well. Those input jacks are hand soldered. Look at that nice big blobs of solder on there. And they are of the split variety, of course, as well. We have one PTC on the voltage side over there, but that is it in terms of input protection. Reverse side, not much going on, but I gotta say kudos, Anning. At least you gave us some nice dielectric on those selector tracks. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. And as well, that rotary selector track housing, it is permanently attached. It's part of the membrane to the meter. It's not gonna come out unless you really wanna rip it out. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six selector pads. And of course we have those nice soft touch buttons as well. So there you go, in a nutshell, put it back together, come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the ending, AL01, high precision multimeter with inductance. Mm, pass this one by. Yeah, I gotta say, I was rather disappointed with the lane showing in inductance. Sometimes it was okay, and sometimes it was far gone. Way out of spec, not even close. Not sure what's going on, but maybe it just needs a firmware update. I don't know. But as it stands right now, if you're looking to test inductance, I would definitely use a different meter. That's too bad, really, because a lot of people really would get this just because of that inductance feature. But hey, if it's not reliable, why bother? There's a lot better multimeters and this price range that can do a lot more, a lot better. Okay, it wasn't all bad. I mean, we had that pretty good range speed in terms of resistance and capacitor. And honestly, that LCD display, yeah, it's a little ho-hum, but it's crisp, it's clear, and it works for me. Tilt stand from hell, those crazy fuses, and oh man, the list goes on. Hey, you can do better for your money. The ending AL01 gets, sadly enough, two out of five stars. Hey, thanks for watching this review. Everybody, to the next one. Keep on testing.